Superman Red Sun is DC's first animated film of 2020 and tackles the very popular Elseworlds story of the same name, written by Mark Millar with art by Dave Johnson. Directed by Sam Liu and written by J.M. Diamatiers, Superman Red Sun sees baby Kal-El's rocket land in Russia, where after growing up becomes Superman, protector of the people and communist values. Superman's presence in the world causes chaos within America, where scientist Lex Luthor devotes his entire life to putting an end to Superman's mark rule and save the US and the world from his communist doctrine. Superman Red Sun is definitely a difficult story to adapt, which is why the movie really is only a bare bones adaptation at best, which is both a blessing and a curse for it. The movie does its best to try and stick to the general plot of the comic, adapting certain scenes like Superman stopping Sputnik from hitting Metropolis or his battle with Batman, but it changes when these scenes really take place. Not so much shuffling their order, but making them take place earlier in the movie than they do in the book, and I guess that's just probably something of a timing issue, seeing as the movie clocks in just over an hour and 20 minutes, so they've got to keep the plot moving. The biggest change I believe comes from Superman's change of heart and how Russia should be ruled, which happens here when Lana is killed in a concentration camp that he learns about, instead of in the comic where she comes to Moscow for Stalin's funeral and Superman sees her and sort of gives her a job at the Superman Museum. I prefer this change actually since it gave Superman a much better reason to change what the Soviet states are in regards to their gulags as well as gives something for Lana to do since she just kind of disappears from the book after a couple of panels. The Bizarro Superman sequence was also really great as well with a highly patriotic superior man kind of taking the place of the Bizarro Superman but slowly he turns into the Bizarro Superman we saw in the comics, which I thought was really great. For every change like that, we have some bad ones as well, like the letter that is meant to break Superman near the end of the comic. A piece in the comic which is really great, seeing this great, powerful man taken down by simple words on paper. The letter here doesn't actually exist, and it's merely words that Lois says to Superman in regards to saving Stalingrad, the city that Brainiac had bottled, which for some reason they decided to destroy in this film, which I'm not really sure why they did that, maybe to add stakes, but it just kind of came out of nowhere and didn't really serve a purpose. The biggest change, however, comes in the ending, where the comic has quite a mind-blowing twist ending, which I will not be spoiling here. The movie foregoes that, instead actually kind of stopping short of that, doing kind of half of it. On one hand, I'm upset we didn't get the twist ending, since for general audiences, it would have been quite a mind-blowing moment, and a rather creative moment at that. But on the other hand, I'm glad they didn't since they would have surely bungled it somehow. The animation is good in some parts and really bad in others, especially with the really lazy backgrounds in some scenes, most notably when Superman talks with Lois on the roof of the Daily Planet. I don't know why they just don't pump a little bit more money into these animated features since I think they would really do well with a little bit more quality control in them. The cast was all fantastic. Star Trek Discovery's Jason Isaacs takes on the role of the Russian accent at Superman and does a really great job with the accent. It never really breaks down and you never really hear his natural voice come out. Dietrich Bader as Lex Luthor and Amy Acker as Lois Lane are really great as well and I quite enjoyed Bader's nonchalant, smug, better than you voice for Lex. It fit the character so well and I've loved him in all the DC Universe stuff that he's done, whether it be Green Lantern, Batman or now this. Overall Superman Red Sun isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Some of the changes however I think ruined or misinterpreted parts of the story while others really improved on it, resulting in a pretty okay animated feature. I'm going to give Superman Red Sun a 6.5 out of 10.